in search of soil. Let's see if I could summarize it. Um, char itself, the, you know, we want to know what the mechanisms are. What makes it, what makes it do the things that it's claimed to do? Uh, keeping in mind that I won't do the same things in every situation, but um, I think the, the, I always talk about three things that it provides to microbes. So it provides housing. So it's got, you've got all this surface area and it's, um, you know, got pores at every scale. So it's got macro pores because you take wood and, or even straw or something and you char it, the, the vascular structure and the cellular structure is preserved in that char. And so all the, the carbon atoms link up when you char it and make a very strong, I mean, it's brittle, but in some ways it's strong in that it can't be broken down by microbes easily. And so you have all these little, you know, cell walls and, and vascular pores and stuff. So it's very porous. And then you even have, um, you know, nano porosity. And that's just because of the way the carbon atoms kind of, the molecules kind of jumble up. Um, if you ever heard of carbon nanotubes, I mean, they, so there's, there's also a whole nother realm of applications for biochar that have to do with um, material science. So char is being used in uh, electronics, you know, um, as electricity conductor. It's being used to um, block um, um, infrared uh, radiation and even, um, you know, the uh, like microwave radiation because it has these really interesting electrical properties. So it's, it's two things, it's porosity with surface area, all those surfaces are electrically active. Um, so it's so that's what gives it cation exchange capacity, for instance. And also um, it has this impact on microbes where it um, it promotes better, more efficient metabolism by something that's called a diet, direct interspecies electron transfer. So, um, so it gives them a place to live. So surface area, because microbes like to, they say they like to sit down when they eat they, so they can attach to something. And when they're sitting on this surface, that's got these electrical properties because a carbon, aromatic carbon ring, you know, a carbon molecule in char looks like a, a hexagon, it's a six sided ring. And, um, that's what they call a benzene ring because it's really the basis of so much organic chemistry, right? So it's the, uh, and, and the, the guy who first discovered it, discovered it as part of benzene, which is one aromatic carbon ring with some other stuff on it. I don't remember the formula for it. And um, that's an interesting story. His name was Kekuli. This was back in the eight, late 1800s. And he was trying to figure out the structure of this carbon. And he had a dream about the Ouroboros, which is the snake that eats its own tail. And he woke up the next morning. He said, that's it. That what's happening with that ring is the electrons are free to circulate around it. So that's what gives us the electrical properties. So you have sheets and sheets of this stuff in the biochar. Some of you, some people may have heard of graphene. That's another kind of high-tech nanomaterial. They're making um, graphene tubes, and and they just have really interesting electrical, like semiconductor type properties. Um, so so yes, yeah, so that those free electrons are there for microbes, and microbes can live on the surfaces, and they can um, access access those electrons because in their met metabolism. Sometimes they need an electron to complete a reaction, you know, a, a metabolic reaction. And um, when they're, and sometimes they need to give one up. And so when they're on this substrate that is conductive and has free electrons, they can not only improve their metabolic efficiency, but they can also um, ex more easily exchange electrons with other microbes. So you get increased diversity. And we all know that, you know, Biological diversity is is how we get health, right? You, whether it's in our bodies or in the environment. So I would say, you know, one of the main things that biochar does is it promotes 
microbial life and microbial diversity, and you get more stable, more resilient soils from that. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out some of the great clips and watch the full interviews right here on In Search of Soil.